Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Chef on the Coffee. I'm here with my next episode of my advanced tutorials for the ancient era cultures. Um, I have had one hell of a good Neolithic era. As you can see, I've got 190 influence. I've got two outposts. And I have a pop of 19. Crazy, man. Absolutely crazy ancient uh, Neolithic. I got I, I got just mammoth spawn after mammoth spawn. It was, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Got nice territory as well. And we can now pick our uh, culture. So, in this particular situation... I'm going to be picking the Olmex. Now, I rated the Olmex pretty poorly. Pretty poorly indeed. Um, only a C tier. However, in this particular case, uh, I feel like Olmex is going to be the best. Now, why do, we, why do we take the Olmex in a situation like this? Because... I, as I said, there are cultures that are more map-orientated, and I feel... The easiest way to snowball early on, you know, if you get a very, very powerful Neolithic, is to take Olmex. Now, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, considering I said that they're actually on the weaker side of um, civs that you can pick. Well, how do they snowball, snowball if you get the best start? Well, with a start like this, we have a lot of neutral territory in between these cities, right? And we can very, very aggressively settle territory. Very, very aggressively sell territory. And that's what we want to be doing. It's funny because they're in a stat culture, but honestly they play more like an expansion culture with how aggressive that they should be um, taking uh, outposts and stuff. Uh, what I want to do is start uh, culminating or, you know, bringing all of my scouts together into packs of four. Packs. Packs of scouts. Because they're going to go and murder all of our neighbours. Now, why is having this much influence significant in the Neolithic? So, turn 14. Why is it significant? Well, if you get two outposts set up, this outpost, your first outpost costs 5, and your second outpost costs 20. So, that's 25 influence. The first city that you set up in Ancient costs nothing. The second city that you set up in Ancient costs 160 influence. So, if you could generate 185 influence, which we've done uh, by a long shot, in the ancient era, or in the Neolithic, then that means we've hit ancient. I've got a couple of turns before this outpost is finished, but we can set up Seleno immediately. San Lorenzo, we're going to go for the potters. Expert policy, industry first, then science, and then money, and then food. Now, why do we put industry first with the old max? Uh, I like putting industry first with the Olmex purely because we're going to need to get building and we're going to need to get like our borders set up early. Um, so we don't care so much about science. Science is not a big deal for us. In fact, the first thing we want to tech um, in this particular situation. We have got access to horses. I don't really see any access to... We've got some more horses there. I don't really see it. We've got some copper there. But, I mean, honestly, you can go for the javelin throwers. You can. Um, it's good if there's lots of forest. If you're attacking a nation that's in a lot of forest. We have a decent amount of forest around. Um, but I think with Olmex... You, honestly, you can probably skip the javelin thrower. Until these get buffed a little way, in some way, their line of sight is just really awkward to play with. Honestly, I'd rather just get city defense and start bullying people with warriors, or maybe even rush for chariots. But we're going to go for city defense for warriors, because I feel like that's a, that's a stronger opening. Uh, after that, we've got some decent luxes. We're going to go for calendar. I'm going to pick up fishing, because now fishing is especially important with the Olmex, because you have so much additional influence. And that lets you set up lots and lots and lots and lots of harbours, and also get your Luxes hooked up. So, the Olmex can both expand very quickly, but they can also hook everything up really quickly as well. So, it's kind of important that you get those techs started early. Now, we do have someone neighbouring us, so we're going to go trade with them. Uh, they won't have any resources, it's the Harappans. They're probably going to go steal all my population. In fact, because it's the, the Harappans are right next to us, we need to make sure that we claim... 
need to be especially uh, active in claiming tiles uh, so that the Harappans don't get them because um, they will they will expand relatively quickly. Uh, we're going to go for um, shamanism. Shamanism now shamanism. I said expansion cultures of one polytheism. Yes, because expand generally if you're playing warlike and expansion, you'll attach all of your territories or attach them early. Uh, as the Olmecs, you don't want to attach things early. You just want to claim more and more land, right? It's okay having a city with just one outpost attached to it because you're going to claim like another five, right? And you see, you, oh, the Nubians attacked me. Okay, well, immediately demand, and guess what? They paid for it. Why? Because we're really big. I have 19 scouts. We are a very powerful nation as far as the AI is concerned. Very powerful nation as far as the AI is concerned. Let the Nubians come off the hill. Yeah. And then just uh, just finish them off. There we go. Easy. Uh, they're, they're, we're ransacking this outpost. I don't care. But yeah, they paid us all that gold, which is really nice because they can buy the potters. Very cool. Very cool. But yeah, if you if you like to play more chill, don't play the Olmecs. The Olmecs are like no chill. <laughs> the Olmecs have no chill. You need to just be constantly expanding, constantly taking more ground. Um, there's no room for for taking it easy as the Olmecs. It's it's all go all the time. All right. Now the territory behind us. Now this this goes into expansion. We want to settle towards other AI and get our borders like solid first against them. We want to get our second city set up before we put more outposts down. So in the meantime, we can get our scouts healed up if they need healing, check out the borders of other nations and start like pressuring them, pressuring their scouts, pressuring their tribes if they're still in the Neolithic, that sort of thing. But it's very it's a very pressure orientated game as the Olmec. So you need to be putting up borders against all the other AIs as quickly as possible so that they can't expand and you have free reign. You can expand wherever you want, whenever you want. You're the Olmex. And you do have to be reasonably aggressive. You can't, um, you can't sit back. You, you do have to be reasonably aggressive, so you are going to have to build troops you're going to have to not necessarily go to war, but you are going to have to fight people for the outpost locations. And um, you'll be better off if you do anyway. Uh, it's okay to have a couple of scouts running around, still checking the map for uh, curiosities, uh, new locations, other civs, that sort of thing. And if you can, uh, tra trade with people. It's okay to trade with them. You know, trade trade luxes. Just, just, don't, just don't do non-aggression. Don't do non-aggression. And uh, don't allow any other sieve space to breathe, you know? Gotta take as much as you can. Right, good tile. This is not a great tile, honestly, but I can set up a reasonably good outpost here. Because it will have lots of industry to start with. I can just build out old mech head and then some farmers. So I can put like, uh, I can even put the old mech head here. On my head here, farmer here, yeah, that sort of thing, yeah, yeah, and then a farmer there, yeah, yeah, that, that'll do, something like that. Okay, you're just doing a little scouting, we found that Memphis is here, uh, there is an enemy scout here, we'll see if he attacks us, see if the Egyptians are feeling ballsy or not. Uh, I could use the gold, yeah, using gold to generate influence with your starting ability is very helpful, because you need lots and lots of influence. Much influence as you can get your hands on, ideally. Uh, this is okay to settle, but again, we don't want to settle behind us, we want to settle forward. Um, even at the expense of our potential growth, straight off the bat. Settle forward. Don't worry about settling behind you, just settle forward. Okay. And we are, I have a lot of scouts to micro in this one, um, so it's going to be a pretty intense... Uh, uh, ancient Era. Right, being attacked again. They're trying to keep me off of their outposts. That's fine. Uh, so you can go sit on the flag and just chill. So if you get in fights, just, just end rounds. 
Yeah, no need to make attacks, just let the AI attack you. Again, this is on humankind difficulty. The only way to match the AI one for one is to just play defense. That's fine. Victory for us. Nubia attacked me. I can go and demand more gold. And if they don't pay me, that gives me more reason to go to war with them later. Over here, they're attacking with just the one dude. Alright, you move up, you move here, you move on to the flag, defend, and he's coming on to it. He wants to try and take the flag, so he's now on the low ground, and we can easily just wipe him out now. And then this outpost is fair game for us to uh, burn down. And if Nubia wants to burn more and more, uh, we are going to attack other people's scouts as well. Oh, he wants to take this fight. The AI loves taking fights early on with their scouts. I couldn't tell you why, but they love it. They love it. They love the danger, you know. Now we play defense. He has to attack the flag. Now what we do is we move off the flag. Because he's going to have to recapture that flag. Just as planned. Uh, that's a flank, so we're going to take that attack. And then end round. He's going to go recapture his flag, attack these guys who are on defense. Uh, now we have a flank downhill. There we go. Now we are going to take a bit of damage on all our scouts there, but that's fine. They'll heal up relatively quickly. And the more scouts we bully, the better. And everyone else is going to be too scared of us to try to uh, try to stop us from doing this, really. Alright, forward settle. Um, it's very good, okay, yeah, it's very good to wait until you get the civics. Now, you should get them early on. You should get these two civics early on. Influence on main palaza, faith on territory. Now, honestly, with the Olmecs, you can kind of pick whichever one you want. Faith on territory means that you're, pretty much everyone is going to adopt your faith immediately. Like, there's no contest. Um, is it better? Is it better to go with faith on territory? I mean, if you really, 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 really want to get your faith upgraded early on and be the head of it, then fair enough. But the thing is, the person who builds the most ho holy sites gets head of the religion. You don't want to spend your time building holy sites, so I wouldn't worry too much about faith. I still prefer the extra influence, um, but create outpost costs. Now that we have create outpost costs, we can go We can go wild. Go wild. So this tile, ours. 10 influence, easy peasy. This tile, ours. Yoink. Um, this city, upgrade. 160 influence, upgraded. Good. Ideally, that would have been upgraded on the very you know first turn of the ancient era, but it's not. It's not a big deal. Um, unfortunately, there's not too many tiles I want to build out, like uh, Olmec Head or anything on. Um, I guess ideally I'd uh, throw down a Maker's Quarter there, but again, not great tiles to build out from. Um, guess I could build the old mech head there, and then a farmer's there. It's not too bad, so that's probably what we'll do. Sometimes you just got to make do with what you got. Uh, these guys are coming back to get some healing. Uh, you're going to go and explore this guy's land, and um, possibly... Oh, hello. Hello, scout. Hello. Just quickly auto that. Probably a bit of a mistake to auto that, because I could have lost the scout there, but it worked out. Right, I think I want to put this outpost here, yeah. Alright, let's get all these guys hooked up. Alright, you're going to go grab that and go south. You're going to check the north coast for Luxes. There might be Luxes in the ocean, you never know. You never know. Alright, so we've barely even touched the uh, ancient era and already loads of stuff going on. That's just Olmec lifestyle. It's just the way the Olmecs roll. Yeah, to be fair, if you like to keep yourself busy in the uh, exploration part of the 4X, then Olmecs are a good choice, because you're going to be very, very busy. I need 45 influence to take this tile. Uh, so we can hold off on that for a bit, actually. Ooh, Free Warrior. Very, very nice. That's huge. Things like Free Warriors and stuff make such a massive difference with... Um, Early beating up the AI, just being really 
really mean. I think there was a scout that came down here. Right, let's pull a couple of these guys back. There you go, there's an enemy scout there. Let's go attack him. Uh, yeah, that's a Harappan scout and he's gonna run away. Uh, you claim the territory on my border, demand it. Uh, refuse demands. Always refuse. Never accept. Never accept the demands of the AI. Perhaps you were hasty. Yeah, perhaps you were hasty. Get the hell off my territory. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He wants to take the fight. He doesn't really want to take the fight. He thinks he wants to take the fight, but he doesn't. He doesn't. And then these guys are going to burn down this outpost before they have a chance to build it up. You're going to be finished burning that down. You guys need to claim this tile. Uh, I think the best spot to claim is right here and just build over that forest, build a, build a farmer's core there. Let's just go found that outpost. Again, we just, just, just take territory. Don't worry about anything else. All your influence is just spent taking territory. Uh, so you can box everyone in. They're gonna demand that. We're gonna refuse, and he they won't accept. They 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 won't they won't push war. They're too they're too scared of the fact that we have like a billion scouts, and they forever will be. Uh, right. I think a good spot for this outpost is right here. Right, you're gonna just chill for a turn. There was a curiosity down here. Nice, grab that. Uh, you guys keep following the coast. Doesn't look like there's any luxes there. They can check up there. I see an enemy scout. This is now mine. Uh, once these guys are healed up, we can start trying to burn down Yildun and take that as well. You guys can't grab that yet because I don't have the influence. Let's pop you guys back here, just get a turn of healing. Uh, you four... Wait, is there another... Oh, there's a mammoth there. Okay. You guys just instant resolve that. You guys are going to sit on this outpost and start burning it down. You guys would like to take this. Uh, we do want to start attaching again, attach towards the AI. Just got to be as, as aggressive as possible in how you tree expansion with the Olmecs. Right, that Olmec head's almost done. Uh, save your gold, because you're going to need it to pay for troops when you start building actual troops. Uh, I'll go with the solar calendar, sure. Uh, the one thing I will say is buy the potters out. Potters are incredibly important. More influence, the better. Uh, 55 to found that. Uh, we can see the Harappans are coming up this way, so we're going to found this one first. You finish ransacking that, move towards the uh, Harappans. Try to force them as far away from us as possible. Oh, whoop, there's a curiosity there. Okay, I guess these guys can maybe take out that sanctuary in a couple of turns. Uh, enemy scouts. If they do, they want to take the fight. He's going to move up to the high ground. That's fine. Get a nice flank here. And dead. That's another scout. And this is all population we're just knocking out. We're getting military stars. You should get your military stars pretty quickly with the Olmecs, admittedly. Because uh, you are going to be fighting a lot of people. And every territory we claim is an extra chunk of influence. Uh, I think these guys will come over here to help with these scouts, I think. I've got two packs of four here. Discovered Lake by Cal. You should discover lots of, like, areas as well. Alright, they want to take this fight. 
can't say I fancy their chances, but let them make their attack. Right, they're now out of defense, which is good. Or out of defensive mode. This is going to be a bit rough, this uh, fight here, but we're still going to... We should still win it. Okay. You're now going to move here to give those guys a flank. You should survive this. Wow, okay, you didn't even survive that. That's rough. Alright. Okay, we lost one scout. That's okay, though. One for one is fine. And it's going to allow us to keep ransacking that free of charge. Alright, you go kill them for a little bit of gold. You discovered Lake Baikal, which is awesome. Uh, there's a lair there. I will get rid of that lair, just not right now. Uh, those mammoths would be good for money. So let's go and quickly wipe them out. Extra 20 gold every mammoth you kill. It adds up. Definitely adds up. You can see the Harappans are now starting to build scout riders, so they are going to try and build up proper units. Uh, we're going to overlook. Uh, we want to get this attached. So we are going to spend a little bit of influence getting one territory attached. Preferably ones on the border, because then it will make building other uh, outposts cheaper. Uh, we don't want to go further west. We need to clean up this border to the north, so you guys need to head up that way. Uh, I guess I'd like to send someone back to get that curiosity. Always try to pick up the curiosities where you can. Uh, it's going to help your science early on as well. You're going to have so many scouts running around, they're getting science via that, it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, these guys are still tribes, which I find very, very curious. I'll just auto that fight because it's just a tribe after all. Shouldn't have any difficulty with that. Uh, is this a good spot where they put it? I mean, it's good enough. It's good enough. We'll grab it. Right, these guys do need some healing. Uh, so we'll keep them in our borders. Keep you guys here for healing. And we'll start hooking up our luxury soon as well. Uh, you warriors can come down that way. You scouts can murder that. 20 extra gold. So we're up to 200 gold now. Uh, buy out the Olmec head. Get another Olmec head. Get a farmer's core there. We'll get another farmer's core over here as well. Okie dokie. Very, very solid. Very, very solid. I'm happy with our opening so far. I think this is... Uh, Archetypal Olmec play, shall we say. Uh, this tile's pretty bad, so I'll probably just use it for the industry. Uh, you're being attacked by a bear or something. You you just try to run away. You go ransack that. Grab that. I'm going to go turn you on or explore for now. I think I'll turn you guys on or explore too. Oh, uh, you're going to die to the bear, sure. That's just what happens. That's just what happens. Oh, met the Hittites. Okay, let's go uh, trade with them. Anybody who we can trade with? I still have this crisis. Alright, they paid off this crisis or we didn't have one, one or the other. Trading with you, you just spawned. Okay, how about you guys? You only got horses. Okay, nobody's hooked up any luxes yet, so that's fine. Uh, let's have you guys go and do a little bit of exploring in that direction. Uh, you can go bully these uh, Harappan runners. Really? Okay. Now, ideally, we want to get the kill on them, but... So we'll let them move on to the flag there. Cool. Now we can kill them next round. And it's better to get the kill. It is always better to get the kill. Build up those military stars. Um, 
taking enemy scouts off the board makes our expansion easier. Uh, this warrior, I guess, can go hunt some mammoths by himself. He should be fine. Uh, or he can set up an outpost over here as well. That's also something I'd like him to do. And we're going to have plenty of territories to choose from going forward. You guys, a uh, nice spot for an outpost for you would be right here. Uh, and that is bordering us, so we can build that, no worries. 45 influence for that, you can go burn down this lair first. And now that we're starting to reach the extent of our borders, we can start using our influence setting up uh, Luxes. Now you want to identify which Luxes are most important for you uh, at this stage of the game. I'll uh, go over that in just a second, which ones those happen to be. So in our case, the Olmec Head is a Farmer's Quarter, right? The Olmec Head acts as a Farmer's Quarter. And because of that, it will count as a Farmer's Quarter for luxuries. Now we have Saffron down here, uh, so we want to hook our Saffron up, because that's going to boost all of our Olmec uh, Heads very, very nicely. And again, buy them out if you can. It's much more important to buy out things like uh, Luxes early on. Uh, you know what, I'll buy out the Maker's Core as well, because I need to go set up an Olmec head. So that they can start building theirs. Uh, I'm also going to want a Lumberyard. Non-aggression? Refuse. Never non-aggression as the uh, as the Olmecs, because you can't then go claiming more territory, which is obviously not ideal, because you want to be claiming territory all the time as the Olmecs. Alright, you four dudes, um, you can come down and hunt that mammoth. You guys are getting ready to build an outpost. There's a bunch of mammoths around, so we can get a load of extra gold from that. Uh, you guys move down to there. I want that outpost set up soonish. You guys can come over here and hunt some mammoths. You two come down to the Leventa. Okay. Uh, we've got more saffron. Get that hooked up. Oh, that's Sage, actually. This is Sage. That's Saffron. A Sage is good, too. That's going to help us grow uh, a bit faster. Take the fight. Get the gold. Get the gold. Okay. We've got more outposts to set up next turn. Uh, you guys can set up over here. That's going to give me access to Silk, which is a great resource to have. You scouts going to fight a Mammoth and win, because there's four of you. Uh, you guys going to fight a Mammoth and win, because there's four of you. So that's more gold for me. Okay. You split off and grab the uh, Discovery. And then just join up and smash this layer down. Okay. Uh, you're being attacked. You can retreat. No need to get over our heads. Right. You can build that next turn. go, we've got Fafnir as well. Uh, you should be able to just kill a mammoth by yourselves. Warriors are pretty good at that. There we go. Now we can start thinking, got lots of food, right? Got lots of food and a lot of scouts that are not relevant anymore. So we're past the expansion phase, right? We've claimed massive swaths of land, right? You can see how much territory we've got, and I've still got more to take. But I've got a lot of scouts now that aren't so useful. Oh, these guys are probably going to die. Are you probably going to die? Well, maybe, maybe we can win this. I mean, I've got the high ground, so maybe we can win this. Oh, they're scout cav? Yeah, no, we're not We're not winning this. That that ain't happening. Okay, that's all. Right. They're dead. So we've got all these scouts. We've been focusing on food by getting all mech heads built. So San Lorenzo is producing 48 extra food, right? So it's growing, but what we could do instead is to spam these scouts early, right? Particularly the ones that don't have any XP. We can disband them early, keep the ones with XP around because they're okay as fighters. We can disband like four of these scouts. So now I've cut it down so I only have one scout stack, but I've got extra pops here. Still growing because we're making that much extra food, but now I've got three people in science as well. So once you've finished your sort of expansion phase, if you would, uh, feel free, in fact I encourage you, to disband your uh, scout stacks down, especially the ones without XP. The ones without XP, 
you can definitely feel free to uh, disband down. The Venter doesn't actually produce enough food to do that, so these guys just get to help protect the city. Um, they do provide a little stability um, by sitting on the actual uh, city tile itself. But yeah, just uh, just have them chill. You can go over to San Lorenzo and chill. Uh, you three scouts. Uh, I guess you can go hunt that mammoth down. You four scouts can go hunt that mammoth down. Yeah, you go seven seven people uh, in San Lorenzo already. Seven pop is very nice for the stage of the game. Um, it might be worth me building a few of those into warriors because we are going to need more warriors. But let's get that outpost set up and let's get one set up over here too. Uh, a good spot for this outpost would probably be... I can get a better Olmec head by putting it over here. But I can put it right there, I guess. Olmec head there, farmer's quarter there is okay. But I don't get all this lovely potential industry, so I think it right there. Because I can go maker's quarter there, that's three extra forests. I can put the Olmec head on the other side of the silk once I hook it up. I can put the Olmec head here. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So using, again, the same as my Nubia tutorial, use the fact that the strategics are next to your uh, uh, city center, because they will get hooked up as a district, and then you can build on the other side of them. It's a very important part of learning to build efficiently, is to make use of those things. Alright, now we're making a decent amount of gold. Uh, we've probably got some trade going with some of our neighbors. Uh, let's get that Olmec head set up. Get another farmer's quarter. We'll get the lumber yard set up though as well. And how much does it cost to get that Arlson's quarter? 200. Okay. And we've got fishing now. Okay. Fishing. Fishing is key. So Lavender, I do want to attach tile. We're going to attach Castor. Because Castor uh, is just a, you know, regular, regular tile. Yeah. No, nothing, too, nothing too special. Let's get these makers built first. Um, take the overproductive, yep. So, castle's regular, it's not next to coast. Cities that are next to coast, I can put harbors up, and we're generating 57 influence already. It's only turn 29, so we don't have any natural wonders. Uh, we could, if we want to, uh, we could go for a wonder, we could go for like pyramids, uh, we could go for Stonehenge if we wanted to push our religion a bit more. Uh, we've got options. We've got options. Uh, Mammoth should attack us. Map does attack us. Uh, let's just pull back a bit, see what the Mammoth does. Should move here, yeah. Uh, max rolls, eh? Oh, Max rolls for us too. That's alright then. Okay. Good hunt. What do you want? Trade everything? Yeah, sure, I'll trade everything. I'll buy your papyrus. Sounds good. That's a little bit extra science. That's actually quite a lot of extra science. Alright, you heal up. Alright, science-wise, pick up domestication. We can tech that instantly. Let's get irrigation. Let's get... It. Masonry I don't care so much about. Wheel, very, very important. If you've got lots of outposts, you want to be able to move around them quickly. Go for organized warfare, writing, masonry. And then I guess we'll top it off with sailing, but I'm not super excited about that. Right. Uh, so lavender has got two attached. We're not going to attach much more, honestly. Um, it's not a big deal to attach much more. Uh, we want to be uh, using our influence again. Getting uh, Luxes hooked up. Let's hook up the... Ooh. Coffee's nice, but... Let's go get some more sage. Aha! A discovery. Let's go pick that up. Oh, there's a mammoth there. Okay. We'll hunt all the mammoths to extinction for a ton of gold. Poor mammoths. I know, poor mammoths. Ah, oh, another warrior. Sweet. Another warrior. Good. Three warriors. Always nice. Always nice. Right, you guys move back to Leventa. Join up with them. Uh, they're making more food here. They'll make more food as we get more uh, Luxus uh, attached. 
There you go. Oh, another warrior. Sweet. Very good. Oh, we've got angry barbs. Okay. Angry barbs. Won't be too much of a problem. Hopefully. Uh, we can use our aesthetic star, or our aesthetic ability again. Uh, let's go culture bomb that territory immediately. Get a bunch of culture here. Hook up the uh, saffron. Very nice stuff. Uh, it's 200 to get. I should be able to buy that our next turn. New era. Okay. Turn 31. Look at that. That is a fast time. Fast time for aging up. We had a very, very good Neolithic. But I honestly, again, I think that if you have a great Neolithic, the best thing you can do is, is pick up the Olmex. Uh, they, it's just a huge boon to grab Olmex um, after a solid um, Neolithic. Because you can just expand so much faster than anyone else. Uh, Source is free for the taking, so uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we won over the city limit, that's okay, because uh, totally worth it. I'm going to attach Nyamen immediately as well. And I still have the influence to build uh, this outpost down here. Nice. Uh, these three scouts, uh, do I want to move them up to San Lorenzo? These warriors, we can move north. You guys can go protect San Lorenzo, just these scouts. I'll probably be, again, disbanding them for population eventually. Um, you can burn down that encampment. You're just all uh, exploring. You can burn down that redoubt. You can go on expert policy. Um, yep, good spot for a uh, Olmec head there. Uh, okay, spot for an Olmec head there. Sure, why not? Uh, Industry-wise, I like that for industry. I like that for industry. Honestly, these tiles would be better off as just makers. At least this, this one especially. We'll go like that. Makers quarters first. Olmec heads after. Everything else can come after that. Uh, Potter's workshop, buy that out. Okay, that should do. Then we'll go for the uh, irrigation, build the Olmec heads, get an animal barn. Uh, probably should have got a harbour up here on the cheap. That would have been nice. Let's see. If I put the harbour here, I can put another one here. That's pretty good. I can put this one here for plus 12. And I put this one here for 7. Okay, I can put that one there for plus 12. So that's plus 12 and it gets all the way up there. Which means I can put you for 10. 10 there. Oh, that's good. Alright, and that's why you generally want to use your influence to build the harbours. They take a long time. They're, the again, they're the longest district to build, uh, off the, like, you know, just, uh, naturally with your industry. So, you want to be, uh, you want to be trying to build those of your influence wherever possible. Ooh, army composition. Yes, combat strength on units. Extra influence. Uh, neutrals. We're going to go fight them with our warriors, because... Why not? <laughs> uh, we got another free warrior over there. Cool. Lots of free warriors. So we're getting all these free warriors from our scout just up here, uh, which is kind of is very lucky. Um, you can use all those warriors to fight neutrals, fight other civs near you. Either works. I don't really like fighting on a river, but we are attacking archers, so it should be fine. Ah, oh, they should be dead, but the game, the game sometimes like calculates a a hundred damage is not quite a hundred damage. It's weird like that. Okay, you guys finish them off. Yeah, they're gonna attack my dude that's on the uh, river there. And we're just going to win by taking the flag. Oh, they actually killed that warrior, really? That sucks. Alright, never mind. We can always build more. We can always build more. Uh, don't have any luxes to hook up. Uh, you could build a harbour down. I suppose I'll get you to start building a harbour down here. 
yeah, I guess I'll attach this tile, so put the harbour there, it's good. We'll build the harbour after we do a little bit of, um, a little bit of infrastructure. Find the makers at Arson's Quarter, good, good. Your stability is a little bit on the low side. Try and keep your stability up above um, 90. Again, you get extra influence on your pops if your stability is over 90. So try and keep that up as high as you can. And just work on infrastructure when it comes into like uh, the point at which your, your influence is going to start. Or your stability is going to start dropping. Uh, I'm going to disband these scouts into Leventa, so we have a lot higher population here. Still making a little bit of food, but mostly they're working on industry and science, which is what we want them to do. And we get more uh, we get more influence as well, because more pops in city, more influence. So useful stuff. Uh, let's take... Uh, let's take Swift on units. I always like the Swift on units. Uh, so it's got some science osmosis. Sweet. I'll take some science osmosis. Sure, why not? Why not? And we can get a first tenant. I'll come back to that because tenants are a bit of an awkward one. Um, generally, well, generally speaking, I'd say it depends on your own personal preference or play style. If you want to go for a particular particular tenant, um, I normally like going for the extra industry or extra food. I like these two, but you can also make an argument for taking the my unbelievers, which will give you a free level on all your units and less upkeep. And you can also go for Hunt the Infidels, which gives you more support on winning battles, which is also a really good one too. Uh, money on Luxes, good as well, and so is Science on Strategics. Uh, you probably have to check to see how many Strategics you have access to. Like, I've got some Copper here, which is nice. Um, I've got Horses there, so that's two, three, four... I've got like four Strategics I can make use of. I've got a lot of Luxes though, so we can make a lot of money out of that, but I'm already making good money. Um... Industry from forests, industry is always good. I don't really have any mountainous or rocky terrain, so most of our industry will be from forests. That's why I normally pick that tenant, um, because it's just a huge boost to your early economy. But food from coast is also pretty relevant, because we are very, very heavily coastal uh, based, and we're going to get all our docks up really cheaply by using influence. So this time I'll go for Respect the Sea's Bounty, and we'll take Zorast, because I like Zorast. Um, apology that this particular run of the Olmex is going to take a lot longer. I've got more troops to to manage, but yeah, I don't want to make these uh, tutorials longer than an hour. I think more than an hour would just be a bit crazy. Uh, even even 45 minutes is, is a bit long, but uh, that's what we're working with. But as you can see, you know, at this point we're just going through the motions of uh, how you play Olmex. Just use your influence to build uh, districts. Uh, get your luxes. We'll skip the coffee there for now. Get this silk hooked up. Won't worry about the horses. Get this silk hooked up. Uh, build a harbour here. Build it right there. It's quite a good tile. Uh, don't want to get those horses hooked up. I haven't got the influence to do it anyway. Uh, let's move you go. Uh, you guys can just chill there. Sure, that's fine. Uh, you scouts can have to retreat. As the mice of the Indians, that's the last civ. Okay, let's go trade with them. Oh, uh, you've got things to trade. Okay. Well, uh, feel free to buy your incense, your silk, your ambergris. Uh, we're not going to buy the coffee right now because we're not putting people on farming jobs, so I'm not too fussed about that. Uh, you have saffron and silver. Saffron, I'd like. Hope this is a friendly meeting. Well, it's as friendly as you want to make it. Uh, you want to trade everything? Cool. Go buy their salt. Get some trade going. Oh, oh! I thought my game crashed there for a second. <laughs> the sound just cut out for a bit. Don't know. I think that's just the recording though. Right. Uh, let's bring you guys there. Do I want to take? No, I don't really want to fight two chariots with like two warriors. It's not the most fun thing you could be doing with your with your time. I'd like to grab these tiles up here. Now that we grabbed a, a barbarian city, I suppose grabbing those tiles would be a good idea. Uh, right now, though, 
it's just every turn we just end, get some more things built with our influence again, just get more harbors. The reason you want to build the harbors now is because not only do the outposts benefit from the food, because they're going to increase their population. So, for example, this outpost is now producing 27 food. Yeah. Uh, now, the, the harbor itself provides the food. It doesn't actually acquire the food from the tiles, but the extra three food is useful. Because that's going to grow the city a bit far, or the outpost a bit faster. And that pop does get included in your main city once that's all attached up and ready to go. So. And then here, again, just, just hook up the, the most valuable resources we can. Some incense we can hook up there. That's pretty useful. Some science ultimate leadership. That's a good, a good one to get. Uh, I guess I'll build an outpost right here. It's quite nice. I need 70 influence to do that, so we can wait a turn on that. Uh, you scouts can join up with these warriors just to keep you safe from those barbs. No point wasting units. Right, let's get that copper hooked up. Buy out that makers. We'll just have them build that copper mine uh, naturally. And we're going to start hooking up these horses because I've got quite a few of them. And we can start working on building animal barns and other such goodies. Get our coffee hooked up. There you go. Loads of luxuries available to us. Faster than the Nubians even. I'm going to mention the Nubians a lot because uh, that's the last tutorial I made before I did this one. <laughs> so uh, of course that's uh, fresh in my mind. Celebrating on three cities, fanatical. Let's go with the uh, yeah, let's go with fanatical. I think we're good for science right now, so don't need to worry about that too much. How are we doing for military stars? Ooh, if I could kill these two units, we've got two archers. Four scouts will be two archers easily, so we can take this fight, get our silver military star, then we're ready to age up. And we're aging up at turn thirty-eight, guys. That is a fast ancient era, very very fast. As you can see, the scouts are just going to bully these guys. Sc scouts bully archers. Scout riders are even better at it, but, you know, scouts are fine. They take a lot of damage when they fire back, but on the actual attack, we're good. So, well, that wasn't even too bad. There we go. And those archers are dead. Oh, yeah. If you're if you're going to build archers to defend yourself against, um, like, somebody scout rushing you, if you're playing... MP, I guess. If you're playing single player, the AI won't really do scout rushes and stuff, but it's always better to invest in warriors. Invest in warriors first, get archers later, once you've got like a good front line and organized warfare. Because then you can always guarantee your archers are going to be joining the fight in the back lines, which is, you know, relevant. Uh, you've got more salt to buy. And I'll quickly buy a couple more resources before we age up. There we go, there's more copper. Look at that, four horses. Those animal barns are going to be incredibly good. And then we can build our copper smithies and stuff as well. Not so good on tech as I had done with the Nubians, but I mean, I've got 2k points. Got our builder stars, got our agrarian stars, getting our aesthete stars. I could wait for one more tech to get the gold star there. I could attach another outpost, but you could age up here easily. It's turn 37, so we've got a turn 37 2k point age up. With the Olmex. Got a reasonably sized army from Curiosities, but we could have built one too. I mean, there's nothing stopping me spitting um, warriors and stuff out. Not so heavy on uh, industry. Uh, we've mostly got a bit of a food focused uh, start here, which is not a bad thing, mind you. Um, you could spend some more time in the Ancient. I mean, here's the thing you can age up now. 2k points is a good time to age up um, to get a little bit of a lead, especially with you know with these many outposts still unattached. It's a great argument to flip into the Huns, you know, like unless they've already been taken. Oh, Huns already got taken. Oof. Turn 37, AI picks Huns. That's a, that's a big ouch. But hey, you could go Celts. Uh, you go Mayans. If you want more influence, you go Mayans, start attaching things, getting the Kunar built. You could go Persians, get the extra city cap, start expanding like crazy. Same with the Romans. You got lots of options. But yeah, Olmex kind of play a bit like the Nubians if you want to go wide really fast. Because unlike the Nubians, you get a hell of a lot more influence from having a 
food based emblematic district and your legacy trait giving one influence on the tiles themselves now once territories start flipping to olmec you'll also be able to start demanding them as a crisis for a uh, you know oppressing my people um but yeah for now that that's all you need this is all you need and from here you can play on i think at this point you know if you're going to play olmex up to this point you've got all the spare land to attach you've got really two main paths you take all of this expansion territory and you build upon it so we could play something like carthage uh, to get all the constructible buyout costs and the Kothon for all the extra industry. You could go Kelts, focus on getting your food and your religion up, and just like building up your lands, continue to build up your lands. Or you take a sieve like uh, the Mayans, do the same thing but focus on industry. Or you take the Persians or the Romans or the Huns and go to war. Uh, the Olmecs are very nicely situated to... Once you've had your um, powerful ancient era expansion, to then flip into either a builder focus, get everything attached up and start snowballing your economy, or to go into a more warlike nation. Now, the reason I don't recommend actually starting wars in the ancient era is because you want to rely on bullying the AI. Yeah, you don't want to start a war and go after people's cities because your emblematic unit kind of sucks the jab and throw is not that great um and your your power lies in the ability to basically corner the ai like a lot of the ai have very very poor expansion options uh we are freaking huge i mean i already own like a third of the continent uh, these guys are blocked in a corner. If we go classical, pick up Rome or Persia or Greece or something like that with like a strong uh, emblematic unit, then we could just we could just vassalize these guys or completely wholesale wipe them out. Same with the the sieve down here. I mean, this game I could honestly I could probably finish this run in the classical era with how well this has gone. But that's that is the problem with the Olmecs, though, is that you have to have an incredibly good Neolithic era for them to really shine, right? That's when the Olmecs really shine. And because they're based on having a good era, and the Neolithic era is like the most RNG in the game, right? Whether you get the right curiosities spawned, wherever you can find mammoths and stuff. But I wanted to showcase like the, the height of how well the Olmecs can do. But yeah, I will say, to get to that point, you're going to need to have incredibly good Neolithic. You need to get, like, again, as I said at the start of the video, you want to try to get two outposts down, relatively far from each other, about 180 influence in the bank, so that you can get some more outposts set up. You can get one of them attached to your main one, and you can get that second city built very very early on very very important to do that because that is what's going to let the olmecs you know really be getting their agrarian and their builder styles very very quickly and then you can be focusing on getting all those extra pops that you had from very very strong neolithic to bully enemy scout parties and get uh outposts down and fight neutrals as well you know like the, as i showed the four scouts will easily body a group of uh two neutral archers these neutrals here spearman warrior Scouts wouldn't do so well against them, but hey, I've got groups of two warriors that I can bring over there, and two warriors will beat this because uh, spearmen have a little bit lower strength than warriors, so that would be fine. But yeah, okay guys, it's been a long video. Apologies, I know I wanted to keep this tutorial short, but the Olmecs, I had to micro all of those scouts doing lots of fighting and stuff, so... Um, but yeah, if you want, if you like being busy, if you like being busy in the early game, Olmecs are a good choice because you're going to be doing a lot of that, like running around, getting outposts set up, uh, fighting people in uh, a lot of neutral territory. It's good stuff. All right, it's been me, Chef Command Coffee. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you've got any questions about um, humankind, leave some comments. Uh, I'll try to answer as many as I can when I get the chance. Uh, otherwise. Link to my Twitch if you want to watch some live games in the description. And keep checking back for some more tutorials, more gameplay, more let's plays, and some announcements coming soon.
to a to a YouTube to a chaff YouTube channel near you. Alright guys. Take it easy, have a good one. I'll see you around.